let us have a, a brief look at peer pressure an issue that everyone has to face and that we all must deal with and this is so because as human beings we have an inborn desire to be loved and to be accepted this is a natural desire it is natural to desire approval affection and goodwill from our friends families and with anyone with whom we interact however our desire sometimes causes us to yield to approval that is wrong and sinful so what exactly is peer pressure peer pressure is the influence of a peer group that encourages individuals to change their attitudes and values or behaviors in order to conform to the group's wishes so simply put it you can say that peer pressure is when friends persuade you into doing something that you do not want to do or maybe you want to do it and you just do it because you now have the courage to do it because your friends talk you into it. So you experience peer pressure and you also pressure your peers too. Good? Peer pressure can be placed in two categories. There's good or positive peer pressure and bad or negative peer pressure. Positive peer pressure it leads you in the right direction but negative peer pressure causes you to go to the opposite direction so peer pressure becomes bad when you do something you are influenced to do something that your conscience tell you is wrong but you do it because you want to please others or you want to get into the groove you want to go with the flow. So with that you have to be very careful. While it is that your friends will think that they know what is best for you. And they will give you their opinion. Whether they ask for it, yes or no. They will always be advising you because you are friends. We need to understand that we know ourselves. You as an individual, you know yourself better than anybody else. So do an in-depth search and let your conscience speak and lead. Moreover, if you are a Bible-believing person, look at the scriptures and it offers you guidance as to how it is you ought to behave. Now, good peer pressure encourages you to do good things. Maybe you might have been thinking about something that wasn't good. But because of the influence, the positive influence around you, it causes you to change your lifestyle or change your action, change a path, change something that you are going to do. So when we look at it, what does the Bible say about peer pressure? Is there anything in the Bible about peer pressure? Yes, there is. The Bible gives much warning on the topic. It tells us about influence. Look at Exodus 23 and verse 2. It says, Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Proverbs 1, 10 to 15 says, My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as a grave, 
and wool as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil, casting their, thy lot among us. Let us have one purse. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. So he's saying, when there's negative peer pressure, you have to run from it. You see, it is easy to follow the crowd in doing wrong. It takes inner strength to prevent anyone at all from following the majority. But you know what? This inner strength comes from God. Strength in God will help you to develop the independence of mind and walk in God's way, irrespective of the opinion of others. The Bible is full of examples of people who were pressured. Some went with the flow, others stood their ground. Look at Noah. Noah is called a preacher of righteousness. And he preached for years, although he was mocked. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 12 and 7 and verse 1. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Now Noah was, just a, was not just called into an ark. Noah was first called to build the ark. And while building the ark, he suffered ridicule. Yes, there was negative peer pressure around him. But he stood his ground. He believed in God. And he did what God asked him to do. And in the end, what happened? His reward was that he was saved and his family was saved with him. Most of the men and women who lived in the time of Noah were swept along with the crowd. They might have helped Noah to do the physical work, but they were influenced by the things that were said around them, so they were not taken into the ark. Noah and his family went against the crowd and followed the commands of God. Now let us look on Pontius Pilate. When Jesus was brought to him to be judged, Pilate believed that Jesus was innocent. But when the multitude descended on him, urging him to condemn Jesus, he submitted to them. Pilate got water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. And what happened? Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Then Pilate released Barnabas unto them. And he had Jesus beaten and then delivered to be crucified. Pilate was influenced negatively. He was thinking about his position. And he was thinking about pleasing the top notch of Israel. So he did the wrong thing. So although Jesus was innocent, Pilate caved into political pressure. He made a decision that would please everyone while keeping himself safe. But what did he do in the end? Is that he actually tampered with his eternal destination. When you follow peer pressure negatively, you tamper with your eternal destination. When we lay aside God's clear statements of right and wrong and make decisions based on the preferences of the crowd, we are sure to compromise and fall into sin. God promises to honor those who do right, not those who make everyone happy. The tendency of people to join a majority, the danger is a majority 
may be supporting that which is wrong. It is difficult to stand against the tide of public opinion, but it is evil to imply support for a matter that you secretly oppose. Stand for the truth regardless of the cost. Let us look on Peter when he was at Antioch. When a, Apostle Peter was teaching the Gentiles a doctrine which was not for them, Apostle Paul accused him in a personal confrontation. Apostle Paul wrote, But when Peter was come to Antioch, I would stood him to the face, because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. Peter wanted to please the Jews, though they were the circumcised. So he wanted to please the Jews. He did not want the Jews to see him eating with the Gentiles. But what happened? He ended up displeasing those whom he should have been nurturing spiritually. And Paul stood his ground. He was not swayed. And Paul corrected him. Even though Peter was older in the ministry than Paul. But Paul stood his ground and he corrected Peter as a brother. And Peter accepted it. In life, we often compromise our peace and friendship. But we should never compromise the truth of God's words. We should never compromise our biblical truth to please others. It does not matter what others say or believe about you. Once you are right in your thoughts and actions, once the Bible backs you, you stand for it. Presently, there are numerous worldly attractions which will lure one from the pathway of sanity, religious sanity, spiritual sanity, righteous sanity, holy sanity. There are things that will allow you or let you divert from that path. Many believe that only youths are affected by peer pressure. But we must know and understand that adults are equally affected by peer pressure. The enticement of sin inches on the desire of people to belong to a specific group. Persons are drawn to the fads of society. Therefore, they dress, speak, and live their lives as society dictates. Many are excited to be members of the group which are doing wrong. Students often do not complete their studies well and waste their abilities. And only when the years have passed and they grow to understand that they have wasted their God-given talent that they are sorrowful, that they regret it. They regret lost opportunities, opportunities that were lost because of negative peer pressure. Proverbs 14, 4, chapter 4 it is, and verse 14 and 15. Give us a reminder. And what does it say? It said, enter not into the path of the wicked. And go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it and pass away. Avoid bad company. Company that will influence you to do wrong. Remember that your destiny in this world is at stake. And your spiritual eternal destination will be tampered with if you do wrong now when you know jesus it makes a difference in your life peer pressure can rob us of our joy in christ but if you desire to please god you take a stand purpose in your heart and in your mind to serve god and him only you see it is easy to stand with the crowd but it takes courage to stand alone. 
stand true to the Lord, whether others honor you or despise you, whether they criticize you or they condemn you. Count it an honor to stand with Christ. You see, he cares for you. Despise, despite what the world thinks about you. If you are a believer, you should not worry about public opinion and pressure. The Apostle Paul stood faithful to God, whether people praised or condemned him. He remained active, joyous, and content even in the most difficult times. So your difficult and challenging times should not take away your joy in the Lord. Be firm and stand true to God and refuse to compromise his standard for living. You see, you have to make a choice. You have to ask yourself, do I please God or man? The Apostle Paul stated in Galatians 1 and verse 10, For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. In Matthew chapter 10, 28 we read, Jesus saying, and fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear them which is able to destroy both soul and the body in hell. In Acts 5.29 we read, Then Peter and the apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. So when you are swayed, when you have been pressured, you ask yourself, who am I obeying when I do this? Who is getting the honor when I do this? You need to ask yourself. There's a lot of peer pressure to conform to the standards set by the world. However, the world does not offer a model which you would want to co copy. Especially if you are a believer. A believer should only follow the example of Christ. Remember the plea that Paul made in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. He said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that he present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that he may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. As you live from day to day, and as you come against the pressure that is called peer pressure, I pray that the God's grace, that you'll allow his grace to be sufficient to keep you, and that you'll seek his strength, and allow his strength to help you to overcome. God bless you.